Yeah, it wasn't the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory trailer. Where everything's exactly the same? Yeah, you're right. It, <laughs> it wasn't that. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Are you recording, you stupid bitch? <laughs> I am now. <laughs> Welcome hey, to Why You Still Here, the show that we talk about whatever we want, Halloween. mostly Halloween. Huh? Halloween? Anyway. Um, so yeah, so uh, we're talking about Halloween ends. Lucas and I saw it earlier tonight, and we have opinions about it. Obviously, this is the spoiler review, so hopefully you've seen it, um, or you're just somebody that wants to spoil the whole thing for yourself. and. I, I just don't care at this point. I really don't do it. That's fine. Um, but, uh, you know, just to reiterate from the other video, uh, directed by David Gordon Green. He's also one of the writers on it. Um, and it stars um, Jamie Lee Curtis, Rowan Campbell, Andy Matichak, and James Jude Courtney-ish. Uh, ish. In that order. Yeah. Um, really... You should probably name like 27 other people and then James Jude Courtney. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm so happy. I feel like a weight is lifted from me that I can finally say this. Truly. Right? Yes. More Michael in the shot right now than the entire movie. Um, so we're just going to get right into it. How about that kid? Jeremy? So Jeremy is the name of the little kid that gets fucking his shit rocked off a balcony from a fucking attic door, splits his skull the second his parents walk in the house. His neck breaks, too. I mean, I... The second that opening happened, Brandon can attest to this, I just went like this. Yeah. What? I, I just felt so bad for Corey. I mean, I was like, I, if this sounds so stupid, but it's one of those few times that I kind of wanted to like go into the movie and just be like, it's going to be okay, buddy. You know, it's going to be okay. Like, keep yeah. your head up. Like, I felt so bad for him. Like, everybody was treating him like shit. He is a good kid. And it just, it, it honest, it kind of broke my heart that he goes down this dark path. You know, like, and he doesn't ever get any redemption or anything from it. Like, it it just, it, I wrote it in my notes that I liked Corey, then I pitied Corey, and then I despised Corey. That was my... Your three stages of grief. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And there was a moment there, too, like, when I really started to despise him was when I thought that he was going to turn Alice into the dark side. And I said it to Lucas in that moment. I said, if if she joins him, which it really looked like she was going to, with burning down the town. Just burn it all to the ground. Oh, like the match. Um, I'm like, this movie's going to be irredeemable. Well, that was the point where I leaned over to you and I said, are they poking the sleeping giant? Like, are they going into the sewer to fuck with Michael and then bring him out and then Michael's just going to wreak havoc again four years later so that way mm -hmm. she and Corey can watch everything happen and Corey can slightly participate but that isn't what happened which glad it didn't. But that's what it seemed like. Um, I was getting some uh, actually let me tell you this. So with the whole under the bridge downtown um, mm -hmm. where Anthony Kiedis drew some blood um did what movie if anything did that remind you of just that that area and you you have like the like the pipe and oh sewers and pipes and like 
it? Yes. Of course. Yeah. Well, right. It was that scene in particular when Corey got dragged under and then looked up, and then you can see the light pouring through the sewer grate, and I'm like, hey, hey, there, Corey. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yes. Obviously, you know, there's four writers on this movie. The writing was better. Um, you know, there wasn't like that that really like cringy dialogue that was really present in Halloween Kills. I'm looking at you, Lori. Um, where especially like the speech at the end and then the whole, hey, Michael, shall we? Everyone's entitled to one good scare. You know, that yep. was like, oh, who yeah. says that? Who says that? You know, and I like, told you, dude, when I rewatched Kills in preparation for this, I... I, I am much more, in, when we shit on the movie last year, I'm much more positive about it last year than this year. I fucking hate that movie. And I hate it more than it's I hate great. this movie. It was just I really Michael don't like Halloween it, Kills. Which... And, and you know what? And that's so funny because that's the criticism of this movie is that there is no Michael Myers in the movie and that it isn't as violent. But I ultimately enjoy this movie much more. Completely. Agreed. Speaking of kills, there is obviously a character that comes back that was in H18 and kills, Diva Tyler. Uh, that's not the character's name, but that's the actress. Um, you know, she's the uh, groundskeeper, caretaker of the cemetery. You know, her husband gets stabbed in front of her many, many times. That was it was pretty powerful. Um, I, I we, usually we take, both looked at each other right when we did. Yep. And she's like paralyzed and she can't talk anymore. And she has these terrible scars on her face. And uh, I felt something in that moment. And you know, it's um, really crazy when, when they showed her almost every time they showed her, they framed her looking in the direction that her husband was. Oh, interesting. She was staring. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I'm going to have to keep a lookout for that. Um, so I thought it was pretty powerful. Very good. Yeah. Oh, it was. And I felt so bad for Lori, too. Like, I could see it from both points of view. And I'm like, come on. This should have been the middle movie. Combine kills and this into a middle movie and then make Halloween ends. Yeah. Obviously change some things, but. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. Um, the general just. What do you think about Jet the fact Jump. that, uh, and I made this joke when we were watching it, that Michael stands in one spot until he's activated. Um, <laughs> I thought that that uh, fight in the sewer was pretty cool, though. Um, Anthony mentioned to me after he saw the movie that like how could Corey overtake Michael, and I thought that was pretty self-explanatory. He's in really Michael's bad like shape. Michael's like fucking sixty-eight years old at this point, or however old he is. <laughs> Not sixty-eight, but. Yeah, he um he's in really bad shape. Like he's like hobbling around and stuff. I mean stuff. the whole time he's like like it reminds me of grandpa this like from Texas Chainsaw where they have to like put the hammer in his hand and and beat you know Sally in the head, you know, like that kind of thing like grandpa's mm -hmm. the best. Grandpa's the best at hammering killing people like that kind of thing like Michael's the best. And when Corey has to take his hand with the knife, you know, something like that. Like that's what I got from this. Um, and that was all cool though, and obviously it's like Corey's job that he gave himself to like lure people to Michael in the sewer. And please, let's talk about Michael powering up to the next level after he kills the one police officer. And we talked about it between filming here, but the like he just said shaking he's just shaking his zenia top off moment it was weird and i looked at you and i said what we both laughed <laughs> i mean what's multiple times on? we looked over and laughed it was like what's going it's so weird it's so weird um so there was a line in the movie that was actually funny you loved it i'm sure you know what i'm about to say you the one about Corey's like, dad. That was actually... And he said, I hope you find someone that loves you. Love. Exactly right. Yes, yeah. I think it's his stepdad or his mom's boyfriend or something, but because he calls him by his first name when he gets on the oh, motorcycle. Exactly. Um, but yeah, <laughs> whatever he says, like, I hope you find love. Um, But the movie is just 
unintentionally funny over and over and over again like <laughs> like my two favorite parts that stick out to me is Corey snatching the mask from said sewer fight and the way that he just like starts scurrying away like with the mask in his hands almost like back off well, the, the like, hobo thing in, in the hobo part was fucking hilarious the right hobo part was hilarious <laughs> yeah and i had yeah. to look at his eye to make sure that it wasn't james june courtney <laughs> all along and i'm like what the Comment down below, people. Is that what he said? The hobo? Did he say, "I'm Michael Myers"? You go down there and get that mask, bitch. I'm Michael Myers. That's like what you're I'm not really sure he said. <laughs> I'm Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> you are not Michael Myers, no, sir. Um, <laughs> you liar. If it was Rob Zombie directed, he he would. That's be. what I thought. That is exactly um, what I thought. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, and then, of course, like the mom being so over dramatic, you know, in the bar, and then the dad. Speaking like, of the mom, I fucking yeah. remember when I looked over and I was like, I hope that fucking bitch dies. And you're like, Yeah. Oh, she you does, mean she his does. mom? I meant that Jeremy's mom, but yeah. Yeah, she was annoying as fuck too. But Corey's mom, yeah. So speaking of Corey's mom, yeah, they show the part where he puts the mask on you. Know, he goes and he puts the knife up, and it just cuts away with no death at all. I know, and um, that pissed me off. And we have seen the picture of it, you know, which mm -hmm. is the um, thumbnail of, I believe, our, it was our first video. And that was funny. Like Lucas leans over to me and goes, "I hope she dies." And I said, "She does." And he goes, "Fuck you!" Like I was like, <laughs> like I was just like spoiling everything for him, and I was like, <laughs> "No, it's like we've seen that picture a hundred times. It's our it's our thumbnail photo." Um, like I'm just putting two and two together here. Um, and you ended up putting two and two together. You were a step ahead of me with the red hair girl, you know? Yeah, the one that got the, bobbed. The one with the into the wall. Yeah, the bob. Um, but anyway, the dad though was like, "Corey's a good kid." I never held it against him, but when I saw him the other day, I look in his eyes, and that was not Corey. <laughs> he's driving. Oh, like and then they show the driving sequence. And yeah, Corey like looks down at him, and he's like floors it away. <laughs> like, it's so weird. <laughs> the guy just floors. It. I was. I thought that was so funny, um, and I know that it was not meant to be at all. Um, that was good. That was good. Uh, what what did you think? This is kind of jumping back far, but like, did you think that Michael like transferred something to Corey because he's like looking in his eyes and then he like sees everything that went like wrong in his life? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I I think it was just eye candy. I think there was nothing behind it. Like and it I was thought just the editing of it. I thought in particular it was a little campy. It could have gone either way. Um. Obviously, we we talked about this in the non-spoiler review. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis was awesome as Lori. She was a fucking she was badass. the best. Honestly, she could have been the best Lori the whole franchise. Arguably, she was like she the was the most realistic mixture of H eighteen. Actually, I take that back. Of seventy eight in H eighteen because she has like an innocence yeah. to her, but she's also like not taking any shit. And with that chair, like she's like sitting there like a badass, like Tony Montana. Well almost or all of her innocence came with in that chair. Will Patton and Andy Matichek. I mean you you saw and with Corey too. Okay, you you saw a lot of humanity in between the way she acted with them. Jamie Lee was great in this movie. She was. She was awesome. I loved it. There was only one moment that seemed out of place to me. And she was like, it was, I'm going to get it wrong. But she looks at Allison and goes, you know what? You just need to pull your tits out and show them to the world and tell everybody to fuck oh, off toward the beginning or something of the like movie. that. It, it gave me total, um, uh, the crazy old pervert vibes. Like, and it was a he breakfast some Rob sequence Zombie as well. Vibes. Yeah, which is kind yeah. of funny because I was gonna lean over to you and say, like, what is it with breakfast sequences in the Halloween movies? Because they're all fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was the only weird moment. Everything else um was great. That seems so out of place though. And then it immediately cuts right into like Corey's dinner, I think, where there's like like spaghetti sauce all over his mom's like glass or something. Like I don't I have no idea what's going on there, but I don't either. I don't know if you caught it, but towards the beginning of the movie, um, 
they said that the Myers house was torn down. So the Myers house in and of itself. No, I gone. didn't catch that. Yeah. Um, oh, so, so this, after Big John and Little John died, it was just kaput? There was going kind to of be no cleaning up of that. Not even just Big John and Little John, just everything. Karen getting killed there. I mean, my God. Um, there's blood everywhere. So when they showed that, like, Jeremy's parents' house is vacant now, I least said it was the new I Myers said, house. This is the yep. new Myers house, yep. Which it totally was. And right before you said it, I already got those vibes anyway. So you, yeah, yeah, it's like totally it's right the haunt, new haunted house of the neighborhood. Something really terrible happened there. And it's like a mansion, so it makes it even weirder. But... Oh, with those weird, twisty Tim Burton stairs that they had. I was like, when I saw that, I was like, how oh, theatrical. Right. Yeah. I wonder if that was a real location or not, or if it was a set. It's very um, interesting, nonetheless. Yes. <laughs> um so yeah it, it, obviously the scarecrow mask was like a cheap plastic mask just like the clown mask was that became you know that whole thing and eventually i kept expecting Corey to just stop talking but that never happened he just kept talking <laughs> So you were expecting him to draw parallels to Michael. Yeah. The movie does have have a lot of creativity behind it. It's just why throw these awesome ideas that will take time to develop into the last fucking movie? I know. I know. I know. That's why I kept saying, man, if this was toward the end of H18 or the beginning of Kills, what a fucking concept, dude. It would have been a total fan favorite probably from the get-go. Or you know what I mean even if they just introduced Corey um, for one scene in H18. That's it. That's all we needed. He hasn't done the... Because, he hasn't I mean, accidentally killed the kid yet because it's 2018. Just, just That's the next it, year. Just as it stands, like, Rowan Campbell is is just so good in this movie. Like, he's very oh, lead he, material. I think I he's going to take off um, from this for sure. Um, he's been in other things. I don't think I've ever seen him in anything I else. Haven't. It was like a Hardy Boys movie. Um, but really? he, he's great. He really is great. Um, I I cared for him. But then when, you know, like I said, when you had to hate him, he became very hateable, let me say. Um very it was strange. later on when he's like, I don't you know what's that wrong out, but... with me, that he started to get really weird. Like, like when the the point of like no turning back was definitely the killing of the doctor and the uh, the nurse, but you know, killing his mom too, because everybody up to that point was like somebody that had wronged him or Allison. You know, up until that point, um, mostly Allison. He was kind of doing it for Allison. And then it got like just kind of, eh, you know, like, you know, the DJ too. That was, you know, Fucking such a brutal death off, as well. Flips on the turntable, and then Allison can hear the blip on the yeah, radio when she yeah. pulls into the. That was funny. Lot. That shit was funny. It was definitely. And I funny. understand what you're saying, but I did enjoy the entire event and then you, you know i enjoyed it because i was like a little giddy oh yeah girl. you you kept yeah you kept like giggling I, to I, yourself i probably and the whole time that scene was going on i'm like Brandon will probably come up with some excuse and never see a movie with me again because <laughs> you kept on just, going yeah <laughs> I, I was just so it wasn't happy. that loud obviously but it was more like this yes Yes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That kid. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a couple of seats over if you don't mind. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> so we're now nearing towards the end. Um. Yes. So uh, let's see here. So I, I this dawned on me earlier when I was driving, and it just hit me, and I'm like, you know what the theme of this movie is? Like what the all in all, the theme of this movie. Yes, what would you deduce? It's the death of innocence. So this entire movie is all about the death of innocence. So Laurie Strode grows her innocence back, something I never thought would ever happen. She's like a little schoolgirl again. She, she's the most like she ever was in age 18, and it dies again. <laughs> it's dead. Uh, Allison 
the death of innocence. Uh, she goes from being a normal human being to being a little creepy and both of us thinking that she was going to jump to the dark side. If if she got any weirder, Elena, there was one point where I leaned over at Brandon and I was like, dude, is she Lori in Halloween? In, in, er, I, not Halloween 2, in H2. Because she was just fucking the, weird. Yeah, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Yeah. And I, it, I just it, thought that she was going to yeah. go in that weird fishnet snorting whatever the fuck in the bathroom, wake the fuck up moment. You know what I mean? You're talking about Chucky now. But <laughs> um, but yeah, so the death of innocence, uh, every bit of innocence in Corey died. Um, it doesn't get much more innocent than a child that dies. That's, this movie starts off with the death, the most gratuitous death of innocence. And there's probably other, you know, points in this movie um oh uh cory's uh mom's boyfriend the death of innocence he did nothing wrong and he got caught in the crossfire you know i this think that was all about that side note that was one of my favorite kills of the movie because that piece of fucking shit kid that just taunted cory for no fucking reason over and over again is going to experience the same trauma that cory experienced because he killed someone well he died complete a welding torch burned his face off. The the idea is the idea is behind. You were it. talking what? about that during the movie, and I'm just like, I've, I, you're so beyond what. what Brandon wrote me off like the beginning of the movie, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I I started writing you off around that point. I was fine until that point, um, because there's a lot of parallels between Corey and Michael, obviously, but Michael very purposely killed judith while Corey, it was a complete accident you know so oh, you did you did say that like literally right in the middle of the movie actually yeah so it's just for something to be an accident it's not exactly the same event starting up again you know but i i still get what they're they're going for we were not be on board with somebody that that killed that kid no uh, on no. purpose like we weren't going to be on that journey with that with Corey at that point so i get what they were going for um it was like a walter white situation with breaking bad you're like i still gonna like this guy what's going on but he's a monster um james jude courtney's erotic line i i don't get it i kept I waiting think, for it i think that was just how he personally felt about jamie lee himself and it was a freudian slip i think there Maybe. was nothing more to it than that. Even the moment with Lori on top of Michael with the, <laughs> you know, like that you see in the behind the scenes wasn't even in the movie. So um, Michael looks like the Phantom of the Opera. He's got like the long dangly hair. I and... noticed that he, even as he had these long, weird wispies that came out of his. And, you know, when I saw that, the, the wispies, and it was, it was in particular when she pulled the mask off, when he's like, Jesus Christ pinned on the table. I'm like, I think that I, I'm like, I get what you're saying, but I think that's probably why they they did it like a little bit different, you know, like however they had it. Because if he was like this, then people would be like the parallels, the symbolism, you know, I know, but I'm just going to call it Jesus Christ. Sure. Even when I did it, I hope I did it like this when I imitated I it. Don't but know yes, Jesus Christ pinned on the table. <laughs> but when she pulls the mask off and I see the wispies and long, like, don't tell me that's the fucking hobo from the beginning of the movie. Oh like, is this God. a weird <laughs> twist? I swear I thought I saw, but then, oh, like, no. you, you could see, you know, like, it showed all the burn on the side of the face. I'm like, okay, it's, it's actually Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you think of the ending? Tell me. Um, generally, we, 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 we talk about movies being too long. This movie Just like our video. Enough. Yes. This movie was not long enough. The ending was nowhere near long enough. I think the third act kind of suffered. Um, along with the second, but mostly the third, because it just, fuck. You, 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 you could have made that such a longer fight. And was it awesome? Yes, I enjoyed the jugular slash. I enjoyed the wrist cutting. I enjoyed the uh, grinder thing in 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 the yard. I they, I enjoyed the crowd surfing. Even that was so fucking stupid, but I laughed. I even pointed it out to you in the theater. So I just had to jump in and quickly say wasn't enough. Um, despite how interesting Corey's story is, and it is it's very interesting. Um. 
it didn't really have a place in this movie. And what we really wanted to see was the last, you know, 15 minutes or whatever of this movie. Like, that's what we really wanted to see since the very beginning of this, right? You know, so it's like, so I think that's, that that's where a lot of disappointment comes from. And that's where I'm also thinking how conflicted I might be because we're 13 movies in, dude. How many times are you going to redo this? Fucking kill him off. Do something slightly different. So I admire the balls and the chances that it took. It's just in execution. Yeah, I can see how it's totally piss poor. And it's almost like this movie is like the like the test run to see if yes. people can handle an anthology, basically. Because this is a story that's like, it takes place in the same world. It takes place in Haddonfield, but this movie could have been running parallel to something much more uh, in line with the series. And it, it would have been fine. You know what I mean? Like, like if Michael was much more centric in another story and this was just the other side of it that we haven't seen, then it would oh be God, like if this going was just like the, a side story. Are they going story? for the Haddonfield Cinematic Universe? Are we going to get the Loomis prequel soon? Oh, God, I hope not. There's nothing to tell there. That was a joke. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, I'm guessing that your your rating hasn't changed since we filmed the first video, right? Oh no, it's gone up. This is a ten out of ten. Oh good, oh good. No, um, we're at like a six and a half. Like it's definitely like average to a, a slightly above average. It's got a lot of potential. It could be a lot better. I I I actually do think that in years time, I'll appreciate it more for the risks that it's taken. I do think other people will feel the same way. Yeah. Um. It could have it could have been better, but I just I love that I love that sadistic ass Corey aspect. I, it's so fucking different that I'll take it. It's sad it, to it think really, though. It really is a nice breath of fresh air though, man, because the franchise has been so browbeat that it's just like this is cool to see people in the universe. People love it though. And it's never really gotten and I, stale. I get it. Like people But like, I like it. Just keep doing it and it's and like the same sort of things. Um I, I mentioned this to you earlier. I it might have been recorded or not, I don't know at this point. But um I said like Halloween fans don't want different. We saw what happens when you try to do different and we don't like it. We want the same thing over and over again. As stupid as that sounds, I don't care. Like we want it updated, but we still want the same thing over and over again. You know, Brandon, I just the way as, it is. as this whole saga has gone on in, in the year that we've been doing all this and the, the years that I've known you, Maybe I'm just not a Halloween fan. Maybe I'm just a horror movie fan. But I like to think that I'm wrong because well, you had I a good do run. think I'm a You had a good run for a month. <laughs> but I but I like I I really do think I am a Michael Myers Halloween. It's a great franchise. I fucking love it. I I, I mean, learned I'm all not, the masks. I'm in not a year. speaking for all fans. I'm just speaking for all the ones that are maybe the hardcore about this movie. Or the classic um, classic ones, I guess. But I mean, <sighs> just look at the the most popular movies from the series, and there's some little things changed up, of course, but it's mostly the same sort of thing. You know, mm -hmm. we want the stalking, we want the killing, we want Michael Myers being a badass, and it's sad that this is James Jude Courtney's last time ever playing Michael Myers. Undeniably, the best. You know, I mean, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. I guess that comes down to personal preference, but in my opinion, the best person to ever play Michael Myers. He's so good, and they wasted him, you know? So uh, I kind of feel bad for him, but maybe he's okay with it because he's he is older now. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, definitely him and Tyler Mayne are in the running for the scariest Myers of all time, in my opinion. Just... The ones that I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't want to be in a room with any of them, but those are the two I think I that would just, nope. Just flat out, he, he was just really good at playing the part in general in a way that a lot of stuntmen haven't. Um, he definitely brought an acting 
Because um, I guess you do have to remember that it is a stuntman having to have a particular acting prowess to be able to pull off that character. Mm-hmm. So you as the mega fan, you are correct. Listen to Brandon, everybody, just this once. Yes, do that. Um, so my rating hasn't changed either. It's six out of ten or three out of five. However you want to look at it. Um, and that could change. I doubt it's gonna go up. I really doubt that, but it might go mm-hmm. down. Um, but that's it. Thank you for joining us, everybody. So not not that I want to add anything else on for, for Brandon to edit, but I just would like everybody in the audience to just take a moment and thank Brandon congratulate him on all of his Halloween trivia for all these years. It's all been leading up to the Slaughtered Lamb podcast moment. Check him out if you haven't. If you found us through there, let us know. And also shout out to the Slaughtered Lamb podcast. Go check them out if you haven't and vice yeah. versa. But lastly, I'm going to knock this one off. And I want to give Brandon a personal thank you because if it wasn't for you and you literally forcing this fandom upon me, I wouldn't have cared about Michael Myers as much as I have. I I wouldn't know each mask from the movies. Uh, this has actually been like one of my favorite discussions that we've ever had. I think it's been so like so not one sided. Like it's been so back and forth. Like I feel like a real like I'm really in the Halloween fandom. Like you've accepted me as one of your own, even if I'm a weird. Sure. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for making me a, an actual thing. You're welcome. Thank you, Brandon. That's my personal. You've, you've been, if I had a big you. sword, you've been knighted. And anointed. Isn't that like a holy thing? I don't know. <laughs> um, so that's my personal thank you. And I know that it's it's over for a little while. So from the bottom of my Halloween-y heart in the sewer, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. No um problem. And that is it's, that is genuine, by the way. That's very genuine. Even if it's funny, it's genuine. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's uh it's it's over it's a lot in of fun. the sense of new movies, but obviously we still have uh plenty of videos for the rest of this month. And you know, when I'm editing them, you just you will probably get two months of Halloween. <laughs> Who yes. knows? Yes, the sky is the limit. Um but yeah, so uh, I appreciate you joining us. Yes, uh, the Slaughter Lamb movie podcast, they were great. I I, I won, if you don't know. Um, I also managed to uh, do an entire episode with the worst sounding Mr. audio. Crackley. I'll never in, forget that name for you, Mr. Crackley. In the history of, uh, of probably YouTube. It was really bad. Um and I know what the issue was too, which is so annoying. But you know, whatever. It's in the past. I still won, and it was fun. And uh, and, but I I love those guys. They they truly are awesome. Um, I was just thinking about it yesterday too. I was like, like just how cool they were, and you know how they gave us that shout out and stuff. It, you know, made me so made nice me feel so nice inside. Um, so yeah, definitely check them out if you aren't aware of them. They are um TSL or the Slaughter Lamb movie podcast. It's it's a name that comes from American Werewolf in London. So, you know, it was a bar uh, called the Slaughtered Lamb. Yeah. Uh that's werewolves in London, right? Werewolves yes. in London. I love that song. Which is also the exact same beat as Sweet Home Alabama. I yes. Believe, so, which is also the exact same beat as All Summer Long by Kid Rock. Yep. Yeah. I love anyway. it. Thanks Anyways, for joining yep. us, everybody. Uh, let us know down below what did you think of the movie? Please. Um, did you agree with me? Did you agree with Lucas? Did you agree with neither of us, both of us simultaneously? I don't know. Let us know down below and uh, and we'll respond to you and all that fun stuff. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. It helps us out massively. I don't think I'll ever Do stop Do you want to hear that. him say it again? 
do it and he'll shut up. Come it on, helps us out so much. Hit that button, please. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying this for the next five days now. And if you want me to stop, that's how that's how you make me stop is you hit that you hit that button. And if yeah. you hate us, then you hit the dislike button. I don't know what to tell you. It doesn't matter. Let us know why you hate us in a comment, please. Uh just be nice about like don't get like weird and like like you know don't pull a Corey Cunningham on us. No, please don't. What's it called? Like like really insulting? I'm trying to like derogatory. Don't get derogatory with your comments, please. Cause I'm just gonna delete them and you know, you're not gonna wanna. You know, like you didn't, you put in your, your, all that effort if, for nothing, if, right? So, if I hear one more person call me a fucking Oompa Loompa, and I hear one more person call Brandon Tubby, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking flip out on you guys. One of those is true. Which one is it? I don't know. <laughs> Figure it out and maybe you'll get a James Bond pop or something. Uh, I already have. Sadly, uh, keep a lookout for our mask ranking. We swear out. it's happening at some point. Every single mask from the series, not and really the movie ranking. Every I, single you guys mask are gonna love the movie from the ranking. series that Michael wears. We did it. We got you. And then obviously the ranking of the movies, and we got a little tribute for Halloween three coming out, and you know. So many. I'm editing things. that one, guys. So exciting, and the probably some like shorts. That one, guys. I don't know. Who yeah, knows? Boss. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye, everybody. We'll see you soon. All right. Happy Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween. Halloween, Halloween. Silver Shamrock. <laughs>